Paul does not condemn doing baptisms for the dead in 1 Corinthians 15. So does that mean that Christians are supposed to do baptisms for the dead? That's the question. This is Redeeming Life Q&A. I'm Pastor Brian. This is where I try to answer the questions that you're asking. And today, that is the question. The context for the question comes from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 29 and following. I'll just read. It says, Otherwise, what will they do who are being baptized for the dead? If the dead are not raised at all, then why are people being baptized for them? And he goes on a little bit more in the argument. This question comes up because there are some religions who do baptisms for those who have passed away, as if to say this will fulfill something in, in life that wasn't accomplished before, and now they should do this, and it's a concern for those who've died. The problem here is that is grossly taken out of context. Paul is not having a, a discourse on doing or not doing baptisms for the dead, or commanding or not commanding baptisms for the dead. And in fact, what he's really doing is just pointing out a great hypocrisy in those he's arguing with about the essentiality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's essential for the gospel. And, and so if you go back up a bit and you follow the flow of thought, then it makes a lot more sense. He's saying, look, look, you, you need to believe that Jesus bodily, physically raises from the dead. It is an important part of this. And he's making the argument. He's start back up like even 15.1. And he's making this discussion. He's working through it. He's saying, this is a vital aspect if you don't believe that not only was Jesus raised from the dead, but all will be raised from the dead and then a, and a judgment separated for the right and the left, all of that. If you don't believe any of that, you're getting the Bible wrong. And so then he uses this baptisms for the dead thing to point out the hypocrisy of understanding in those who uh, he's arguing with. He's saying, look, if you don't believe there's a resurrection, if you don't believe we're all going to be raised, that maybe Jesus wasn't raised, that there's no, maybe even no afterlife, what in the world are you doing, doing these services, these baptism for the dead services, if you don't believe they, there's this resurrection? Why, why baptize them at all? Why do this? Let me, let me give it to you, maybe a little bit different scenario. Imagine for a minute you're talking to somebody and they say, uh, they say, you know, I, I, I pay the extra money to park in this parking garage when I go to work because it's so much more secure. And I believe, they say, there is no crime in the parking garage. And then you go, well, if you believe there's no crime in the parking garage, why is it that you always make sure to park uh, in a certain place that's in light? And then you clear out all the items in your car and you hide them and you lock and you lock them in your glove box. And then when you get out, you lock your doors. And then as you're walking away, you do a little beep beep to make sure your car is locked. And you have a little can of mace in your hand as you walk from your car to work, right? So what you're saying is if you really believe there's no crime and the parking garage is totally safe, then why do you do X, Y, and Z? Because X, Y, and Z are actually showing that you don't believe what you say you believe. They're actually showing the, the, the misunderstandings in your belief and the hypocrisy in your belief and the problems that... that X, Y, and Z are violating the statement you're making about what you actually believe. That's what Paul is doing. He's saying, hey, if you really believe all this, then why do you do that? It makes, it makes absolutely no sense. So he's not using this example to condemn or condone it. He's not saying this is a regular practice of Christianity. He's saying this is something you are doing over there, and, and there's no reason for you to be doing this, but also it violates the thing that you're believing. He doesn't actually say... Do it, don't do it. He's using it as an illustration. And, and so I, I think it's dangerous to take something that's only mentioned this one time, this one place as an example, without explicit command or explicit instruction, without regular practice that you're seeing, and turn that into a whole theology that somehow is essential for exaltation or salvation. So, should we be baptizing for the dead? I don't think so at all. And also, that's not even the argument that Paul's making. Instead, we should believe that indeed Jesus was raised, and we too will be raised with him to new life. This is Redeeming Life Q&A. We've tried to answer the question. If you have a question you'd like to ask, you can go ahead and go to the website, redeeminglifeutah.org. There's a form there. You can leave your, your question, or you can find other questions and answers like this one.